Welcome, everybody. I don't know who the skies would like today evening, and if you will have the chance to see the moon after its first phase. But I'm pretty sure that many of you have already enjoyed the magic of a moonlight night. Have you? Yes. That's incredible. Nobody enjoyed the moonlight night. OK. I thought it uh, will come a little bit more. But let me go back a little bit uh, to my memories more than 40 years ago. And I recall a starry night at the Lake Balaton in Hungary. You know it's in Hungary, but not every, every people know that. We went then to an open-air movie. And on the way back to our vacation home, I was just fascinated by the, those very nice blinking jewels on the sky. In those times, street lamps were not so common than today, so we had a much better sight. And then, at those times, I had already seen the fantastic adventures of Spaceship Orion. This famous German TV series called The Space Battle incidentally started almost the same time as Star Trek in the US. And I had already the chance to see several Apollo landings as well. So just looking at that magnificent, magnificent sky above me, I believe I was perfectly prepared just really to ask, are we able to go to the stars sometime? And I believe this was also the first time I just tried to tackle a seemingly impossible project. Another question, maybe the answer will be a bit more detailed from you. How many of you have tried to tackle a problem like going to the stars with that dimension? Uh, one, two, three. Whoa, good. That's getting better. So I started and started to work. So I take, I take, took a blank sheet of paper and started to draw various spaceship designs. You will guess I didn't succeed, even if I used countless numbers of blank sheets and draw very, very high number of spaceships, starships actually, at that time I wasn't able to solve the problem of interstellar travel. But I learned two very important things. First, I learned I will not be able to solve such a problem on my own. And second, I learned also that I will need a very, very strong staying power for such endeavors. I believe this this recognition of these two insights were just a really huge gift for me, for my whole life. Because it helped me to retain the curiosity of a child. And it helped me to get the belief that we are able to do always one more step which takes us farther, even if everybody else had already given up. And it happened to me, of course, even then, that people started to say I would be a lunatic. I don't think that I'm a lunatic. But I have to do something with the moon, I have to admit that. With regard to the moon, these two things I learned were my best helpers as I started to form a real moonshot project. Just imagine the answers and the opinions I got from my colleagues as I approached them with the idea, let's go to the moon with the Hungarian team within the Google Lunar X Prize. That means we should try to build a robot, send it to the moon. It should be able to discover the environment of the landing, cover at least 500 meters in distance, and send back high definition images as videos. And all this, at least 90% financed by private funds. What do you think? What kind of answers I got? Well, it was a very mixed poll of uh, opinions. Mostly, 
they told me we shouldn't do this and we cannot do this for various reasons. And even those who were convinced that the project is doable technically didn't have any idea how to tackle it in a small country like Hungary. But I thought, and I'm thinking still, I have good reasons that we are able to do this. So I had the choice that time and had the problem which I had to solve for, how can I start and keep running such a project in spite of such big skepticism? Then we made actually a pretty unusual move. Almost exactly four years ago, we posted on several geek box and, uh, blocks and technical blocks and said, wow, there is a project is in being formed and we are looking for people, if possible for young people, who are willing to go with us to the moon. Just remember, the average age of the Apollo engineers was about 26 to 28 years. And it happened that many people responded. They came to us and we could start real work. And after about eight months, we had our first success. We were under the 29 teams announced on the 11th February, 17th February 2011 by the XPRIZE Foundation to be in the race of the Google Lunar X Prize. We were part of the game. We had lift off. This was our first success. Since then, we did accomplish a lot of things in spite of the skepticism we faced. We just built and tested our first prototype systems we could go to test size in Hungary first, of course. Then we went with our first so-called I2.0 prototype to Morocco, into the desert, and tested it. And then lastly, last December, December 2013, we were on the slopes of the Mauna Kea and tested our systems successfully in the best place on Earth, which looks like the moon. It doesn't mean that the way of pulley was an easy way. It was a very hard way all the four years. And it is a hard way still, and it will remain a hard way. It is not easy to get to the moon. But I hope that we will see, not exactly it, but a very similar version, in a not too far future, on the moon. This project, the four years I spent on this project until now, actually five, because it was almost a year before we really started, what I spent with thinking and discussing with people, told me that my two insights, keep the curiosity and the belief to be able to do one more step even, was very helpful. We can go really far on that way and can use it. And I believe that most of the pulleys, we call ourselves pulleys or pulik if you like, and most of our supporters already know that we can make that one more step. We have the ability of a strong staying power. But this way to the moon it was just the first step, or it is a first step for Puli, and it is a first step for me on a very, very long journey. Because I believe that we have to go farther. We have to go farther than the moon. We have to go into the solar system, and we have to go, after that, to the stars. We have to discover our bigger home, the universe. But to go to the moon, and to go to the planets in the solar system, and even to go to the stars, we'll need definitely much more power, much more endurance, and much more power of communities. 
that means we need much more power of you, because the power of community is you, you, you and me. Fortunately, we have the internet, and the internet gives us unprecedented means to use the power of communities. We can organize projects, we can fund projects, we can use the power of the internet to create just famous things and fabulous things. And there are already a couple of space projects organized via the internet and funded via the internet by crowdfunding. Let's try to use this power wisely in the future. So 40 years ago, I started this journey as a child who had a dream and started to draw starships on a blank sheet of paper. Now I'm a lucky man because I have a team which aims to go to the moon and even farther. And I believe that this is an excellent example of endurance, working with a community, with dedication and power. That means that we can make that one more step together. Let me take the words of Hermann Hesse. These words are my personal motto. To let the possible happen, the impossible must be tried again and again. And if we do so and try again and again, then we will be able to do that one more step which takes us further. And the most important thing is this ability is not a privilege of me or of a few people. It's a privilege of us. You all can do that one more step for you every time.